Clarity. The clarity grading scale, as defined by the GIA, begins at flawless, then internally flawless, then VVS1, which stands for very, very slightly included, VVS2, which is the second grade of very, very slightly included, then it goes to VS1, which stands for very slightly included, VS2, which is the second grade of very slightly included, and then it goes to SI1, which is slightly included, SI2, which is the second grade of slightly included, and then I1, which stands for imperfect, and then there is I2 and I3. There is a term that's accepted in the industry, although it isn't an official grade, it's called SI3. You might hear that uh, in your uh, quest for your special diamond. Uh, a lot of times uh, people in the trade uh, don't want to label a diamond in I1 because it has connotations that it's imperfect, yet it's not as clean as an SI2. It's somewhere in between and it's that gray area. So the trade has adopted the SI3 uh, term, but that term is not used by the GIA. It's not an official grade, uh, but I digress. So in this clarity grade, how is the diamond um, identified as having one of these grades that we just mentioned? Well, at the top of the scale, you have flawless. Flawless refers to a diamond that has no internal characteristics or external characteristics. And when I refer to char characteristics, I mean imperfections, uh, anything that is uh, visible uh, under a microscope um, that is not the actual diamond. Uh, it could be a feather in the diamond, it could be an included crystal, and I'll talk about um, the various uh, types of imperfections that exist. And I also mentioned that it doesn't have any external, such as any chips, abrasions, uh, anything on the surface of the diamond. So that's flawless. And of course, a flawless diamond is very rare. Therefore, it is very expensive. The grade that's directly below flawless is internally flawless, which is just as rare um, in the grand scheme of things, uh, but this time it doesn't have any internal characteristics, but it might have an external uh, blemish, such as a, an abrasion or um, a very small uh, nick. Uh, that would render it internally flawless, but not flawless. And then, of course, you have the VVS1 and VVS2 grade, which are also very rare. And characteristics in a VVS1 and VVS2 diamond can only be seen under magnification and by very well-trained eyes. Uh, most people in the industry uh, would not uh, be able to grade a VVS1 or a VVS2 diamond without the assistance of the GIA or um, diamond graders who have years and years and years of experience grading such diamonds. Uh, after VVS1 and VVS2, uh, you have the grades of VS1 and VS2, and again, the characteristics that exist in those diamonds can only be seen under magnification, uh, but it uh, becomes a little bit easier for professional diamond graders to identify uh, those types of diamonds using magnification and again uh, still those types of diamonds would probably get designated VS1 and VS2 by the GIA and uh, not by someone uh, who trades in, the di in diamonds um, because again it, it becomes very expensive and you don't want to rely on your own opinion you'd like to rely on the GIA to substantiate or back up your opinion of such a diamond. After VS1 and VS2, you have what's arguably the most popular diamond grade that exists, which is the SI range, and separated into SI1 and SI2. These diamonds um, can be graded by most jewelry professionals using a 10 power loop, which is 10 power magnification, and of course, diamonds uh, in this range are popular because the price is considered affordable for diamonds, um, and, but more importantly, the jump from an SI1 to a VS2 in price is an exponential jump. But to a layman looking at the two diamonds, 
there is no difference to the naked eye, generally, so a lot of times it doesn't justify the jump in price, um, unless, of course, you have to have um, a diamond of a um, much higher clarity and you want something that rare. So over the years, it's become uh, probably the most high demand diamonds are in the SI1, or the SI, I should say, the SI range, uh, because you factor in price and what you're getting uh, in return. After the SI1 and SI2 range, you have the imperfect range. And imperfect um, is graded imperfect because generally you can see the inclusions to the naked eye without the aid of a uh, jeweler's loop or a magnifying scope. Now, the ranges, uh, each one of those grading ranges are separated into one and two, and then of course with the imperfect you have one, two, and three, uh, because that refers to the, the nature of the imperfection, the size of, its, uh, of the imperfection in relation to the diamond, and of course the positioning, and of course the quantity. So when you take all of those criteria into consideration, uh, you're able to easily gauge a diamond and uh, um, assign it a clarity grade uh, based on a combination of those. Now, here comes the problem. Uh, who's to say that what you deem as something being large or um, being numerous is the same as how someone else would? And that's why many times with uh, diamonds of a more rare um, uh, grade, you want to rely on the GIA because it's a team of graders. The GIA uh, can utilize sometimes um, 5, 10, 15 diamond graders uh, to corroborate their opinions before assigning a final grade. And of course that comes into play uh, when you have diamonds that are more rare and thereby more expensive, um, you want to have a panel of diamond professionals reviewing it and assigning it its final grade. Um, so that's pretty much the, uh, the conversation when it comes to clarity. And again, uh, keep in mind that of the four C's, the only, I'll repeat this, the only criteria of the four C's that cannot be contested is the carat weight, uh, color, clarity, and even cut is considered subjective. So that lends to the difference or the variance in price that you can see when you have uh, diamonds that seemingly have the same color and clarity, yet the price is different. So keep in mind that clarity, color, it's not a specific um, one definition uh, clarity or one definition color, it's a range and it's subjective.